Stranger Things Season 3 is here. Now, I usually do an episode-by-episode episode thing, but that is just too much to do when an entire show drops all at once. I wanted to get to these episodes, so I'm done with that. Any show that you can binge all at once that drops all at once, like a Netflix show or something, I ain't doing it like that anymore, where I watch an episode, run downstairs, review it, run back upstairs, post it. Oh, no way. It's too much. So American Horror Story, stuff like that, that drops week to week, fine, I'll do this, but I ain't doing this with no Netflix shows anymore. It's just too damn much for me. All right, so Stranger Things Season 3, although this should have been called Strangest Things, the first season should have been called Strange Things. Um, but then where do you go for Season 4? So uh, They're smarter than I am. Um, man, love is in the air this July 1985. Holy crap, man. Everyone's in love. Every relationship and everybody's dating everybody in this or wants to be dating or is breaking up or anything. This whole damn season is about love and relationships and breakups and wow, they really packed that on. But I loved it all. I mean, this season's great. I love every single thing about Stranger Things so far. Yes, even season two, episode seven, the filler episode, I thought was great. Didn't see the issue, but I'm not here to argue about that. I've talked about that shit enough. If you want to watch my review on it, you can go back to a previous video last year when I talked all about it, and that was before I even knew the episode was hated. I just went off of my true feelings at the time. I loved the exploration of Eleven's life outside of the town and something maybe before all of them and the connection she had. But, of course, the people's demands win the day, and there was no mention of eight, right? Wasn't eight or... Something like eight or nine, whatever number that girl was. I think it was eight. Um, no mention of her, no affiliation, because, you know, as soon as she was on the screen, people would be like, oh, we're doing her again? I would love to have seen her, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, they, it, fortunately and fortunately, they listen to us these days. When it's something you like, then you're excited and you're like, I'm glad they listened to us. It's something like you don't like. It's like, I would have liked to see more of that exploration and maybe we will in the further seasons, but you know as soon as that character shows back up, people will be like, not this bitch again. All right, so as I said, relationships are a blooming in this. You've got Eleven and Mike. You've got Lucas and Max. You've got Hopper and Joyce. You've got Nancy and John. You've got Karen and Billy even. You've got freaking Mike's mom possibly having an affair here and we have to deal with all the relationship drama she has there not wanting to be with her husband which is extremely clear not only because she wants to screw billy but like when they're at the fair she's like oh my god i'm so embarrassed by you i don't want to be with you anymore this is insane and she is one hot lady so you know she can still get out there and get whatever the hell she wants you've got steve and robin in this which of course doesn't end up going anywhere because of something but uh, and, um, you've got Dustin and Susie even, which has the best joke in the damn season. Uh, now I'm going to get into spoilers, but as I said, overall, love the season. Love everything about Stranger Things. Look, guys, I even decorated. So, all right, let's jump into spoilers. I'm not going to spend too, too long on this, but we're just going to kind of run through the bullet points. So the relationships in this... Um, seeing Eleven and Mike have the relationship that they have, that they're just macking on each other every second. You got Hopper here. He's like replaced her as this daughter that, you know, came in and took over for his dead daughter. And they, they kind of need one another. So, so it's kind of just, um, you know, uh, it's kind of like right place, right time kind of thing. Like I need a father and I need a daughter. Like we both need replacements for one another. And, and that works there. And he's so protective of her because it's, his second chance here and of course you know um he wants to protect her from boys and here they are they're always kissing and he looks and the door gets closed and he freaks out and he has to go to Joyce and be like what the hell do I do and he threatens Mike's life and Mike is like I don't want to see you anymore and I have a sick aunt and all this shit and she's like you lie do you lie Mike I love that line and then she's like, I dump your ass. I love her relationship with Max. See, my favorite thing, like one of my favorite relationships, if not my favorite relationships on screen, are friends who just don't give a shit. I'm not talking about like dating, boyfriend, girlfriend kind of shit. I'm talking about like buddies. Like Steve the Hare Harrington, who was my least favorite character in season one and is now my favorite character in the damn entire show. 
I don't know how the hell that transition happened, but he's just so kick-ass. How can you not love Steve? Team Steve all damn day. But his relationship he has with Dustin in this. Oh my God, I love it so damn much. I love when people will just geek out in public, in front of everyone. They can say what they want. They can do what they want. They can think what they want. And they just keep going. And they're having a ball. And everyone can just screw themselves. Same thing with Eleven and Max when they're in Starcourt Mall. And they're running around. They're just having the best of time. And the girls are like sticking their nose up at them and being like oh these girls are lame they just sit there and they look over and they're like, like go right back to laughing having a great time i love shit like that be yourself don't care what anyone thinks just oh yeah i love that stuff and especially since i love dustin and, and i love steve harrington those are like my two favorite characters in the damn show and the fact that they're like chummy buddy buddy best bffs it just amplifies both of my uh, my my love for both of them. Um, we've also got Lucas and Max's relationship, which is just kind of more for comedic relief throughout this. We don't really explore that all that much. Um, that's why this show would benefit from maybe a couple more episodes. We could have explored more things, but they're more secondary things, so they're not something that I'm bummed out is missing. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, if it was there, I'd be really interested to see you know, more of the effects on the town that Starcourt Mall had. We kind of got up to see a teeny bit of it. We even got the introduction of the mayor, played by the uh, the great Carrie Ellis, Ells, however you say his name, um, from obviously Princess Bride and Saw and, and many other films. But um, I don't feel like his character was all that well explored. I don't think the Russians were all that well explored because I didn't really even understand what they were even doing any of this for. But that's the mystery, right? That's the intrigue. It's just... You know, a little more would have been fine. It, it's nothing that hurt it, because as I said, I love the season. I've loved everything about it. Just, just things that was just like, ah, I would have liked to see more there. But as I said, I think that it kind of retains the intrigue, the mystery the, uh, that surrounds everything. So, yeah. Uh, Monster in this season is just incredible. You can tell the production value has been elevated, and everything feels um, bigger and and the stakes are higher and this monster holy shit the cgi on this thing is just incredible and it's such a freaking amazing amazing looking creature it's such a formidable foe like it like the, the scene where all the bodies are coming and just collapsing in front of it and they're turning to glue uh into goo and it's like it's it's all kind of coming together like a like a t-1000 or all the little puddles are like you know running off towards the thing and, and it's kind of all morphing into one big power ranger freaking monster thing amazing just the, the fx on that thing are incredible you know i just love the look of the creature it's got like spider legs it's like freaking 15 feet tall it is terrifying it's even got like a little uh xenomorph freaking mouth inside of its thousand tooth mouth uh, this thing is terrifying, and the best use of Eleven's powers in this season. She's picking things up, throwing them around the room, throwing them out the window, breaking faces open, throwing cars, killing guards. This freaking hopper is killing people right and left. That T1 or the T800. Speaking of Terminator, so that thing's like a T1000, but we got a T800 uh, unit there. Uh, this 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 main villain guy that's chasing Hopper throughout the thing looks straight up like the Terminator. They did it on purpose for sure. But his death when he gets thrown into that rift opener thing uh, machine it just turns him through the gears and just turns him into a bloody mess. Pretty freaking uh, pretty gruesome for a TV fourteen show that's supposed to be aimed at you know a, a little bit younger of an audience. But I'm not complaining. Great stuff. We got the introductions of a couple new characters here. I mean, they're not fully new characters, but, um, uh, well, okay. Three of them are, one of them is. We have, we have Erica, who is Lucas's sister, which we have seen before, but she plays a much more substantial role in this, and I absolutely love her in this. The whole free ice cream for life stuff, and her outfits, and her mannerisms, and her... Everything she says is, is really funny. I really like her character. Love Robin. Big fan of her. Loved Alexi. Such a sad scene when he dies. Oh my god, what a bummer scene that was. Like he's just gaining hope. 
like he beat the system in his head it's like oh america's rigged and it's all about false hopes and he's like no like i did it i i i popped like five green balloons in a row and he's bringing back the woody woodpecker doll i think that's what it was right because i think uh the dude the marty is like ha 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 or something yeah it's, yeah whatever it doesn't matter but freaking gets shot like just one shot real quiet and he just looks down he doesn't even know what would happen he looks at it and it's just oh so sad it's such a sad sequence it was sad to see him go because i really did start to like him uh mayor klein as well uh, you know carrie carrie ells here um you know his character is kind of throwaway it's okay not really all that amazing or, or important but he gets to get his ass kicked around a little bit by hopper so we can see what a brooding dominant male he is um really like the use of uh, all the main characters that we know in this i think they're really well balanced throughout the season um we've got the uh, the little love thing going on here with steve harrington they see steve is the best character because he has such an amazing arc throughout this show he's such a dick douchebag and then he kind of comes through and he becomes this good guy but then he's kind of knocked back down in this season a little bit he's not steve the hair harrington anymore he's not cool anymore girls come on you know he tries to come on to girls at the at the place and they're like what a loser he's trying to hit on us he has no game like he works at a freaking ice cream parlor and he's totally ignoring the girl he's with, but then she kind of reminds him of what a dick he was. And even the guy at the video store at the end is like, dude, he's a dick. And she's like, no, like he really has changed. And you can see the change in him. He is a straight up hero in this season. And all this stuff with them on drugs and talking and laughing and all that hilarious, hilarious stuff. Um, and, you know, when he, when he comes on to her and she's like, I'm gay. I mean, it comes out. I really, really, really hope there isn't anybody of course there will be some people but i really hope that doesn't become like a it's an agenda thing there were gay characters before the 2010s okay can we drop that please just fuck off with all of that anyway but the way he handles that situation is just great it's such steve is just such a great character he's just you know here he is he's trying to get over nancy and he's like you know um he's like fuck it I finally like somebody else and she's like I wasn't obsessed with you because I wanted to be with you I'm obsessed with you because I wanted to be you I wanted to be all the all the girls that are looking at you like I didn't understand why everyone thought you're so cool and like he thinks on it for a minute he swallows his pride and he just kind of chumly along like chumly goes along with her and buddy buddies with her and like oh yeah what about this chick and this and that great moment He's, he's just wonderful. Um, and all the Dustin stuff is just great. The stuff with Dustin and Susie and the never ending story and him saying he has this girlfriend that looks like Phoebe Cates. I mean, Phoebe Cates, come on guys. If you're in, you know, if you're an eighties kid, you remember she was like the catalyst for a masturbatory fucking desire. So she really kind of sparked the life into our genitalia and uh, it made us aware that it even existed she was just the you know the pinnacle she was the freaking top tier hottest chick on earth when we saw that days uh that dazed and confused that uh fast times at ridgemount high scene that that infamous scene in every young boy's life from from this time period so i like that she's used as a reference and she's even used as a cardboard cutout at one point in the movie because she was such a significant part of the 80s for young boys uh, of the time um but him saying that she's hotter than her and, and the whole like she makes him freaking sing never ending story and it gets all super intense while everyone's like trying to figure out and try to survive and hops waiting there for the code into the safe and l and all of them are getting attacked in star court and oh just the way all that plays out the way like they're all separated throughout the whole season and then they kind of all come together and converge in that mall and then they make their plan and they go off oh and the steve moment where he comes in he freaking hits uh billy in the side there and, and spins him off course and saves the day yet again like steve is the hero man he's so great um and um i mean yeah i just i feel like everyone was used so well i like to see um uh, nancy and john kind of off to trying to do their journalism thing and nancy not really listening to anything she has to deal with the you know the the really sexist nature of, of businesses back in the 80s i know that 
things are better now. I mean, things aren't perfect now, but they're a fuck ton better than they were then for women, for sure, that, that time. And even further back than that, it was way, way worse. Um, but, oh, God, you've even got uh, Jake Busey in here playing the, the shithead uh, sexist asshole in here. But I, I love seeing Jake Busey anytime I see him. I, I, think he's, uh, I think he's great. I just think he's so creepy. And the way he plays things, big fan of him ever since I saw him. One of the first times I saw him was like in uh, Stone Age and uh, Contact. Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah. Um, and then I don't think they were trying to say that Will was gay in this. But when he I just think they were trying to say he was a late bloomer. But when Mike comes out and he's like, it's not my fault you don't like girls. It's like, what are you trying to say, man? What are you trying to say? Uh, but I don't think that. Okay, can we just say Hopper's alive? Okay, if you watch the... Uh, if you watch the after credit sequence, the, 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 you know, that Russian base, no, not the American, that's Hopper. My brother said something about uh, Alexei, who I just really loved, as I said, um, said that if you were close enough to the thing, it might put you through the rip. I'm going to have to go back and, and look at that or something because I don't really remember that dialogue exactly, but uh, the he's alive. Come on now. Um, and then the L goes to live with the Byers family. Interesting move there, um, which breaks apart everybody. So where's the next season going to take place? Like, where are they moving? And, and you know, Hopper being out in Russia, or so we assume, um, you know, we're kind of spread out. We're away from Hawkins now. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next. This show better be renewed. Could you imagine, man? There would be an absolute riot if this wasn't renewed. Um, it's so hard to like talk about an entire season in one sitting. Um, I love Starcourt Mall. Um, that was a good introduction to, or uh, that was a good use of of. Uh, 80s tropes like there was just so many things they could explore inside that mall the mall was such a big deal there goes my decorations my my, my blu-rays and these vhs cases these are so cool man the hawkins video and stuff i'm sure everybody has these damn things but i got these for five bucks a piece at this target sale i made a video on it hopefully you guys picked them up uh, for five bucks when they were on sale like that at target for the still uh cartwheel thing or whatever um all right and um yeah I, I think that's about it i mean there's there's plenty others i could talk about I'll, I'll be looking forward to speaking with you guys about this in the comments below but uh what were your favorite scenes who are your favorite characters um what would you have liked to see more of in this season or less of or what wasn't working for you what was working for you um is anyone really, I mean, there are people that don't like this show. I don't know fucking how that's possible, but that does happen from time to time. Uh, are there people that didn't actually like this season at all? I'm sure they exist. Let me know. I, I'm, I'm real curious. I think most everyone's going to like it. Everybody I've seen who has finished it loves it. So um, I think it's another home run for the Duffer Brothers and Netflix and whoever else was involved in this. The cast freaking nailed it. They, they, they love Eleven in this season, man. She really, really uh, has kind of just come into her own. Because in the first season, she was just kind of quiet and she did some powers and we didn't really get to know her. And then the second season, that's why I loved that episode everyone hates so much, episode seven of season two. Like, we got to see Eleven out there on her own, trying to make it and, and, and exploring her own feelings and her own design like it's just great to see her kind of out there and 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 figuring things out for herself not kind of being pulled upon by everybody like pulled like on every, every side like like a freaking uh game of um freaking why can't tug tug of war tug of war jesus i was like tug a rope tug of fucking tug of war um I felt like that was going on. In that episode, she really got to explore herself, and I love that about that. And I feel like she's just kind of become her own person in this season. And, yeah, I mean, I was so happy. So happy with every episode. It's a bummer that I had to knock it out so fast, but it's, like, addicting, you know? It's like you can't stop once you start with this stuff. So, anyway, guys, let me know what you thought. Other than that, I'm going to bed. Adios and good night.